update on the Helena Taylor Bayonetta voiceover madness, Mr. Black. So we talked about that last podcast where she had uh, made that series of videos saying that uh, that the developer had only offered her $4,000 for this role. Then there was some investigative journalism uh, run by, Wall. I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was Wall Street Journal or, no, it wasn't Wall Street Journal, it was... Uh, uh, Jason Schreier, who is part of, I can't remember now. Anyway, they, 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 in another, another installation, both ended up using their sources at this company and both found out the exact same thing. They were told the same information from different people from within the company, that that was untrue, that they had offered, uh, they had offered her more money over multiple sessions that totaled closer to $15,000, which she turned down. Uh, that was the story going forward. She disputed that immediately, said that was not the case. And then information properly came out, even more receipts this week. Surprise, bitch! So, now she's really fucked. Because now all of the voice actors and actresses that were championing, uh, championing her up to this point, uh, because it wouldn't be the first time that a voice actor or actress got fucked on a contract, uh, anyone... Anyone that was a, bet a betting man or woman probably would have assumed that the odds of of Platinum not having tried to stiff her on this, I mean, the, the over-under in Vegas would have been heavily in Helena's favor on this bitch. Unfortunately, this is one of those times people got rivered bad on this bitch because she came out and said, oh wait, well, it's actually because the information came out. And so we have the real story now, Mr. Black. So the real story goes a little something like this. So Helena is originally offered $10,000 to reprise her role for the entirety of the game. She says, nah, bitch, that's not enough money. So they came back and they said, okay, we'll offer you an extra $5,000 for a total of $15,000 to, rep to reprise your role as Bayonetta. She says, nah, bitch, I'm out. They said, okay, that's fine. Would you like to come back and do a cameo of some kind in the game with another character for, you know, there's, I can't remember how many lines were listed or whatever. For $4,000, which is where she got that $4,000 that she originally toted in those videos, was for the comeback just to do that since she denied or, or declined the $15,000 to be Bayonetta. And, of course, she said no to that as well, and then went on to do her videos about how they only offered her you know, $4,000 or whatever to do this role. So, that's what actually happened. Whether or not $15,000 is enough money... That doesn't matter here. I personally think $15,000 is probably a little on the fucking skimpy side for a game that makes a lot of money. I'm sure that Jennifer Hale made a lot more than $15,000 to be Bayonetta in this game. Regardless of that, the big problem here and what all these voice actors and actresses in the community have come out afterwards to say is, you know, the problem here is that Helena has just made their job so much fucking harder to make yep. the case about all of this, which is an ongoing issue of compensation for voice actors and actresses in film and games and commercial and anywhere because she wasn't truthful from the get-go. If she just came out and said, they offered me 15 grand, a lot of people probably still would have looked at that and went, yeah, you know what? For the third game in a franchise that sold a hell of a lot of copies, 15 grand to be the titular role sounds a little on the, th on the thin side. Yep. You know, you, you know, like maybe 25 grand, something, you know, something else, you know, something, maybe a small cut uh, of, of royalties, anything. But, you know, 15 grand, man, it sounds a little thin. Instead, she went with the $4,000 number, which was like not untrue, but also not true. And now it looks yep. bad for everyone. And now it's like a pain in the ass to, to, for yep. the conversation, right? I, I mean, I, when you when you talked about this last week, I mean, I figured something fucky was up. There's just mm. it just didn't make any sense. Um, so there you have it. It's a little column A, little yeah. column B. She was going for the, I was technically being truthful, right? Yeah. The $4,000 existed. It was an offer from them, but it was not the original offer for the role. So she Correct. was kind of like, she was being manipulative and she shouldn't have done that shit. Cause now everyone in the community is like fucking Helena, what are you doing this to us for? Yep. Now we now how in the fuck are we supposed like we're, we it feels like starting from zero again whenever we're trying to have this conversation about compensation in the voiceover industry doesn't make it any easier for all those men and women out there doing the shit uh, and so yeah that's been the uh, the unfortunate bit to say uh, the least but that is the official story now uh, as to what truly went down 
And, uh, and the game is reviewing relatively well uh, so far. So if you're a Bayonetta fan and you don't care about this anymore, great news. Game is apparently pretty good. I also saw a pretty hilarious tweet this week, Mr. Black, that uh, I retweeted where it was some... <laughs> I think it was another, it was another, uh, she, she was a writer for another, um, another website, uh, or, or publication for a while. I can't remember which one now off the top of my head. Anyway, she, she tweeted about how that she was very confused as to, uh, and, and retweeted a video clip from Bayonetta 3, it looked like, or, or maybe even two, but very confused as to about how straight men were attracted to Bayonetta. And in this video... Like, she literally, like, she's in the, she's fighting all this shit, and there's, like, uh, fucking bullets and shit that end up, like, splitting her clothing. She ends up being, like, butt-ass fucking naked, floating towards the king. You know, you're not, you're not seeing titties or anything, but you see, like, some bare ass and shit. She's moaning, like, the whole fucking time, because Bayonetta, it's, like, this super hyper-sexualized, sex-positive female role. She ends up on the back of, like, a fucking space unicorn or some crazy shit, because, again, it's Bayonetta, and everything is, like, an acid trip the entire fucking time. She starts bouncing up and down, and it's slow motion on her ass on the thing, and she's bouncing up and down in this fucking, like, unicorn, and she starts shooting everything with, like, her bullet fucking heels and all this other bullshit, and she's done, like, the Sailor Moon transformation shit for her clothing and whatnot. And then, and then, like, and then everyone in the in her comments of this tweet were like, what do you think men are attracted to? How much, like, you've got a long leg, fat ass, sexual, po sexually positive, like, dominant fucking, like, badass woman on screen doing all this shit. What do you think they're sitting at home going, nah, that ain't it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what, who do you think that's, like, what? And apparently it's all based on the fact that, you know, that uh, the, the the running bit is that, uh, is that, you know, Bayonetta is supposed to appeal to just, like, everyone, including including the uh, the fairer sex, which makes perfectly good sense in my mind. But it doesn't stop, like, it doesn't stop, it's like, how many, how many dudes, straight dudes watching, watching fucking lesbian porn as their primary source? Tons of dudes attracted, that doesn't matter. Is it an attractive yeah. woman? Yes. Great. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need the bullet heels. The bullet heels are a nice additive. Like that shit's cool. But I didn't need I didn't need it. But it's an it's 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 there. Makes it even better as far as I'm concerned. <laughs>